This video shows how to optimize mapping performance when you load data from Type 2 slowly changing dimension tables to Snowflake in Informatica Cloud Data Integration. Before you begin, make sure you've created a Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse V2 connection in Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services Administrator. The link to our video showing how to create the connection is in the description below. We want to create a mapping that inserts new records into a target dimension table. If an existing record is changed, the mapping closes the record and then creates a new version of the record with the updated value. We'll configure the mapping so that data flows in two branches. The first branch inserts a record for every new record and for every updated record. The second branch updates records in the dimension table that have changed. In Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services, go to the My Services page and open Data Integration. Create a new mapping. Name the mapping and select a project. We'll start with the source transformation. Enter a name and select a Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse V2 connection. For this demo, we'll configure the source by entering a query. The query selects the latest records from the stage table and any matching records from the dimension table. We'll also include a left outer join to select all records from the stage table. Now we'll validate the query and click OK. Next, we'll add an expression transformation to generate a checksum value for the data that you read from the source. We'll create the first output field as a string field. Add a condition to connect the customer type, name, and category data from the source and generate a checksum value for the data. Validate the condition and click OK. Now we'll add another output field as a date and time field. Here we'll add a condition to update the last updated date for the records inserted in the dimension table. Validate and save the expression. Let's add another date and time field and add a condition to update the date that records inserted in the dimension table were created. Validate and save the expression. Now we'll add another expression transformation to include a few more fields. Create an output string field and add a condition to see if the checksum value changes from the previous value in the CRCNO field. The condition also configures the mapping to update the record if there's an update to the checksum value, ignore the record if there's no change, and insert a new record for each row that was added. We'll create another output string field. Here we assign the checksum that we calculated in the expression transformation. Next, we'll add two branches to the mapping. One branch includes rows the mapping will update, and the second branch includes rows the mapping will insert. Let's filter the first branch to include new and updated records to load to the target. Enter an advanced filter condition to include records flagged for insert and update. When we use this filter, the mapping task inserts a record in the target dimension table for each new record and each updated record. Let's add a sequence generator transformation to generate a surrogate key for the dimension record. Now we'll add an expression transformation to the first branch for the filtered records. Add an output string field and add an expression to flag the new records that the mapping inserts to the target table in the first branch. Let's also add an integer field and add an expression to generate keys for new records that the mapping inserts to the target table in the first branch. Now we'll configure the Snowflake target transformation to insert records to the target table in the first branch. Select the Snowflake V2 connection and we'll use the single object target type. Select the target Snowflake object to write the data. We'll choose an insert operation for the Snowflake target. 
Map the fields that you want in the target object. Make sure you include the latest flag and the newly calculated checksum. Now let's go to the second branch. Add a filter to link the branch to the previous expression transformation. When we use this filter, the mapping updates records through the second branch. We'll add an expression to flag updated records and list the date the records are updated. Create two string columns. In the first column, create an expression to flag updated records. In our example, we'll use the letter N. In the second column, add a condition to indicate the updated status. Now we'll configure the Snowflake target transformation to update records in the second branch. Select the Snowflake V2 connection. We'll use the single object target type. Select the target Snowflake object to update the data. We'll select an update operation for this Snowflake target. Select customer key as the column that you want to update in the target object. Map the fields that you want in the target object. And make sure you include the latest flag and the last updated date. And then save the mapping. Now we'll create an optimized Snowflake V2 mapping task. Name the task, find the directory where you want to save it, and then select a runtime environment. Select the mapping that we just configured. On the Schedule tab, in the Pushdown Optimization section, set the Pushdown Optimization value to full to push the mapping logic to the Snowflake target. Select Create Temporary View to run the configured SQL query. Select Create Temporary Sequence to push down the SQL generator transformations. And click Finish. Great! Now we'll run the mapping three times to verify the update and insert behavior we configured. On the first mapping run, if the target table has no records, the mapping inserts all the records from the staging table to the target. We can check the status of the mapping task on the My Jobs page. Click the task name to view the details. We see that the target table had no existing records, so all the records were inserted. If you want to view details about the Snowflake SQL statement that Cloud Data Integration issued for the mapping task, you can download the log file. Now we'll run the mapping task again. We haven't added or updated any records since the first run. And we can see that no rows are updated or inserted. This time, some updates and inserts were made in the source stage table since the last mapping run. So we'll run the mapping again. And we see that two rows are inserted and one row is updated. So the mapping in branch 1 inserted two new records to the table, and the mapping in branch 2 updated one record from the staging table to the Snowflake target table. You can download the log file to view details about the pushdown optimized SQL statements that were issued for the insert and update commands. And that's it! In this video, we showed you how to create a mapping in Cloud Data Integration using a Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse V2 connection to load slowly changing dimensions, or SCDs, to Snowflake. Add filter and expression transformations to the mapping to load new and updated records to the target dimension table, and how to run and optimize Snowflake V2 mapping task. For more information, see the pushdown optimization chapter in the Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse V2 connector guide. Visit our communities and support hubs or check out our website.